How's it going, everybody? <laughs> it's a three, two, one. It's time to go time. Time to go. Praise God. We uh, we're live under the tent, so uh, we'll wait for some people. We have already got some people. Hello there. <laughs> What's going on, Dale? Appreciate you joining us. And we're gonna wait for some more people before we get started. We are early. We're early. Uh, Chad goes to bed at what? Nine thirty. Yeah, at least. Yeah. So we we want to be short. We want to be up late. I want you home for the last good blink. Anyway, but hey, I'll tell you what we have had. Oh, already on. Go ahead, tell you. We've already had a anointed every corner of this tent. Um, lifted up our brother. Uh, it's, it's, hey. It's been good. This time is already go time. Hey, it's we, time to go. Revival has started. We, uh, we prayed, like Chad said, we anointed the four corners of this. We're under the tent. You probably can't tell. I don't know. It's kind of make it work. Uh, one side of the tent. But we've had uh, a brother come by one prayer and we prayed with him and uh, he actually went around the corners helping us anoint the tent and we dedicated it to God. And this is his place, his land, his tent. And so we're looking for his presence to move my Becky said the sound is very low. Can y'all hear us? Can you give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you can hear us? Yeah, can we brother Luke what? Hey Luke, how you doing buddy? How's the sound? Can y'all hear us pretty good? Give us a thumb. Let me see some, some lights or uh, thumbs up. If we need to, Ben can start singing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. People signing off real <laughs> quick. <laughs> I'll see some thumbs up. Okay. All we'll, right, we'll, 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 we'll talk loud so you guys can hear us. Right. But we're doing a study on Revelation, the book of Revelation. <clears throat> and uh, we got to verse 8 the last time we were doing this. So we're going to... Uh, Get started back with verse eight and continue on. Yes. Anyway, um, so we'll wait to get your Bible and uh, so I can hear you pretty good. Thanks, Luke. Um, I need your phone. I got it in the truth. Yeah. It, we're at eight hundred four South Wall Street in Benson, North Carolina. That's where the tent's at, and so we are under the tent right now. And uh, thank you, brother. Right, brother. And we we prayed. Anointed the tent, dedicated the tent to God, and uh, the revival starts Monday night at 7:30. And again, it's 804 South Wall Street, right here on Highway 301. Yep. And uh, so you guys make plans to come. And if you would, we appreciate you praying. Just pray, pray, ask God to move mightily, in, not only in this town but surrounding areas. <clears throat> we need revival. We need a move of God. So. Uh, I'm here with my good friend Ben and Chad, Chad Honeycutt and Ben Coleman. Good evening. How y'all doing? Oh, how mercy's getting excited around here. <laughs> y'all don't even realize how just, just being under this tent um, and, and what we've all witnessed under this tent in, in, in different counties. It's, 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 a, it's an awesome feeling. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, it's it's good, to, good to see. Good to see it up. Amen. I'm, uh, I'm trying to share this right quick. Hey guys, at, at any time you got a prayer request, post it. We'll be glad to pray for you. Uh, after we're done with this live, we'll pray. And also, um, question? any questions, please put them on there. We'll try our best to answer them. If we can't answer them, we'll, we'll uh, do the research and get back with you. But we're living in the last days, and so it's very important that we're ready. We're ready to meet Christ, ready to see God. Uh, Amos 4, the little scripture in this says, prepare to meet thy God. So we need to be prepared. And um, I just have a, a sense of urgency. I know God is, a, is uh, I feel that he's about to come back any moment. So we need to be ready. We need to be ready. Y'all got anything you want to say before we get started? We'll dive right in. Dive right in. All right. Revelation chapter 1. The book of Revelation is... Uh, the uh, unveiling where God pulls back the pulls back the curtain and lets us see. And uh, we've been going through it and we're at verse eight right now. And so I'm gonna read verse eight. Okay. Revelation chapter one, verse eight. If you would please hit the share button and <coughs> see if we can get some more people on here. I am Alpha and Omega. 
the beginning and ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. This is a divine declaration. And what we're using for my study book is Preacher Bobby's book. It's uh, Revelation Unveiled. And um, he's uh, my pastor. He, it's a verse-by-verse -verse study. And it's very good. And if you'd like to have one, you can write him. And uh, we'll, put, we'll, we'll put it in the comments what his mailing address is. But that's what we're using. The Word of God. But he, this here is just a breakdown of every scripture. So the introduction is, in a world where nations rise and fall, where all things die and pass away, Jesus reminds us that he is changeless, eternal. He never changes. Mm -hmm. We see so much changing in our world, in our country. So many things seem uncertain. But one thing is certain, God will never change. Mm -hmm. He never has. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It says he's also promised that by his nature imparted to us that that unhurt, we're unhurt by death. We may be like him and live forever. I think sometimes we we get focused on death. You know, my, I, I, you're, it's it's such a it seems so final. It seems so uh, separate. But for a child of God, death is just a doorway. We're just going into heaven. We're going into glory. See, we're already dead in Christ. If you're a child of Christ, God, you you're dead in Christ and you're risen in Christ. And so the Bible says we're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I think sometimes we forget that and we get so caught up in this world and we forget we don't belong in this world. This is not our home. This is temporary. Anytime y'all got something y'all want to come in and let me know. <clears throat> um, talking about the tiles. He said, I'm Alpha and Omega. That means the first and the last. The first, uh, the Greek alphabet. It's like saying A to Z. He holds the whole world in his hands. He's the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. He is the beginning and ending of all things. Creation and life. Truth and without him, nothing could continue. The earth would fly from its orbit to nothing. I don't have Isaiah 9, 6, 7, but y'all can look at that. That's the reference he made here. Uh, he is the great I Am. That's the one I like. Go ahead. Uh, God was in Christ. Jesus was God, is God. They are one manifest in three persons. The Trinity. Amen. The Trinity. He says, I am, I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the door to heaven. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to meet him? To meet the Almighty. That was for verse 8. Let's move on into verse 9. Y'all got any questions, please comment. Put them in there. We'll be glad to try to answer them. I'm going to read verses 9 through 20. Now what? Go ahead. That was just verse 8. Yeah. Everything on this page right here that was broke down was from verse 8. Yep. Right? Yep. It's a breakdown. It's a... Uh, Honestly, this is a wonderful study book. We have um, some of them. To yeah. To the revival. yeah, yeah, we'll have some. But um, the Revelation Unveiled, Dr. Bobby Carter, my pastor, and uh, we will put the comments. Uh, I, I don't want to guess. I can't remember the PO box, but we'll put it in there uh, after this video so you can uh, get in contact with him if you'd like to order a book. Revelation, verse 9. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. There's a whole lot in that verse, and I don't want to go too fast tonight. But in verse 9, when he says, I, John, your brother and companion in tribulation. Think about that. This is John uh, who saw Jesus, walked with Jesus, was the be beloved disciple of Jesus. You know, he always referred to himself as the one Jesus loved. He doesn't call himself, uh, you know, anything great or any title. He says, I'm your brother and companion in tribulation. Think about that. Um, Jesus said in this world we'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. Our relationship with Christ is makes us brothers and sisters in Christ. So John is our brother. And uh, 
John would rather be called brother. This is the highest title one Christian can give another. You know, think about it. How many times you hear people call, you know, hey, brother, hey, sister? Almost as if it's just something like a greeting, but right here, it's a very significant thing. If you call somebody a brother or sister in Christ, then that's, a, that's the highest honor you can give them, the child of God. Chad? Yes. That's what I was just reading. This is the highest title one Christian can give one another. Now, how many times do we call each other brother? All the time. All the time. Is it heartfelt? Yeah. Yes. Amen. 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 Yep. Um, he didn't put himself on a higher level than we should. Ain't that true? He didn't put himself on a higher level we should. Does the flesh ever get in when we do that? All the time. We we should. We should be like Jesus and humble ourselves mm -hmm. and become servants. He he made himself a little lower than the angels and came to serve. And uh, I think a lot of times we want to be served. Yes. But we need to be doing the serving. He was on. He was exiled. John was exiled to an island called Patmos for the word of God. You know, we talk about suffering and persecution. Uh, the disciples were martyred. Martyred, never killed. And Jesus, uh, John was banished to live by himself on the Isle of Patmos. And uh, it was for it was for God. It was for the word of God. It's for his testimony. It says because he testified for Jesus. We will relate this to our lives at times. If we are faithful to the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, you know you, you can't you can't serve God from your heart and, and and be all in and not face some kind of tribulation or persecution. It's going to happen. It'll happen. Unfortunately, it happens a lot of times from, from fellow Christians. That's right. Because we live in a time when Christians are complacent, asleep. Mm -hmm. And when somebody's on fire for God, um, I've seen it happen. They, it's like they want to snuff it out. They, they don't, I don't know, I don't really, I've seen it happen. I've seen people get saved and get on fire in church. And, but somebody will say something like, really sharp at them sometimes. And just bring it right back. And that's, just, that's a shame. I would rather have a church full of new believers. That just got saved in, in a church full of people that's been saved for years because those new believers are on fire and they're, they're wanting to do something for God. Um, they haven't got all this junk in their head from church hurt and all this other stuff. They just believe God. And I think that's, that's something we can learn as seasoned Christians that just because we've been through the battle and all these other things we've been through doesn't mean that we can't have that same fire and that same zeal that's keep going. Mm. There's zeal is. Yeah. I like that word. Lord, have mercy. And that's what a lot of times, a lot of things is missing is the zeal. Yeah. It is. Uh, whether it's a tent, a church on Main Street, it's the zeal. <clears throat> what well, say we're here for the word of God because he dared to preach the word. For the testimony of Jesus Christ because he testified for Jesus. We will relate this to our lives at all times. i got a good question. Okay. Uh, Vanessa <laughs> McDaniel asks, the Bible says it is appointed once for a man to die and then the judgment. When we are caught up in the rapture, is this considered our death? Well, the Bible says you've changed. You're uh, changing the moment you die. Given a new body, so I would say yes. I'd say uh, if you want to put it that way, because when the rapture occurs, the dead in Christ rise first, and then we are we are caught up with them and changed. Our bodies, these bodies, this flesh cannot enter into heaven. Only our spirit. Uh, we have to be changed. We have to have a glorified body because sin entered into the world through Adam and Eve. So this flesh, or the, the Bible says, in our flesh dwells no no good thing. Mm -hmm. I hope that answered the question. I, a little question, uh, yeah. my brother of mine Sunday mentioned uh, Daniel in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and this was this comes from a comment from a recovering drug addict. 
found Jesus and zeal fell in. He was just on fire. Um, the lines. Daniel didn't even smell like flesh. He didn't notice anything. He, he was scared to death to, because of that spirit that he had. Mm. So I said, that was pretty good, didn't I? Yeah. He didn't even smell like a pork chop. <laughs> you know, I mean, just because, you know, you didn't smell like a tomahawk steak. <laughs> and what happened? He slept like a baby. He slept like a baby. <clears throat> Used the line for a pillow. <laughs> well, he was on the Isle of Patmos because he was preaching. He's preaching the gospel. He's preaching the truth. If you want to, if you want to face persecution and, and for the Lord's sake, then start preaching the gospel. Yeah. Start with it. Sooner or later, uh, somebody's going to come at you. But don't do it for that reason. Do it because they need salvation. They need right. to be saved. Right. You know, gospel is the most <clears throat> important thing that we can share with anybody. Good news of Jesus Christ. I've got a thing to add. And hey, it's hard not to person. share that. Huh? It's hard not to share that. Amen. It is hard not to share that when it's truly heartfelt from the when your your whole heart's in trouble, hundred percent. You never go pump gas and pay for twenty dollars worth of gas and get fifteen and drive off and leave. You give it to y'all. You get every bit of it. And that's what we share is every bit of. It. We should share every bit of. It. Verse ten says, "He says I was in, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice of the trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the begin, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, and to Ephesus, and to Smyrna, and to Pergamos, and to Thyatira, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea." And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment, down to the foot, and girt with about with paps with a golden girdle. Now, what's the, uh, what were seven golden candlesticks? Chad? David. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go real quick. <laughs> Dr. Bobby Carter's book here, verse 12. <laughs> <laughs> You see how quick he does? Okay, the seven golden candlesticks are the seven churches. <laughs> uh, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, it says one like the Son of Man. Jesus is in the midst of the churches, just as the priest in the tabernacle kept the candlestick in order. Jesus is in the midst. Uh, this vision that he saw is of Jesus, and I think that's what we call this video. It's a vision of Jesus. The, the very first thing he got a, a vision of was Christ. He wasn't uh, beat down, uh, flower child looking hippie guy. Uh, a lot of people try to think of Jesus as some weak. Oh, yeah. you know, God is, uh, he's not weak. And he's, in his vision that he gives John was eyes as flames of fire. Hair white like wool, and his feet is brass. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. So this is the vision of uh, of Christ and the, re the return, the returning Christ. Any comments? Nope. That's all. That's all. I'm just listening. I, I might just, you out. No, I'm just like Vanessa says. If Ben no. is being really quiet, somebody said, "Give me an amen." Look, 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 look. Vanessa even says, "We are learning together." That's what we're doing. Amen. You got to watch David, he'll call you out right there. I'm going to call him out. All right. <laughs> All right. <coughs> verse 12. Uh, excuse me, verse 14. It says, his, heads, his head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were flames of fire, and his feet like it to fine brass as it burned in a furnace, and his voice with the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive and have the keys of hell and of death. Mm -hmm. Let's back up. And we're teaching tonight. We're not preaching, so just taking our time here. Now let's talk about the, the way Jesus looked in that vision. What is, what's the symbolism? 
because Revelation is full of a lot of uh, a lot of symbolism, but then there's a lot of just it means what it says. Uh, Hair like snow. Yep. Purity. That's right. Eyes as flame. Oh, oh. Chad. What is purity? Purity. Clean. Yeah. I agree. Clean. Yeah. Pure. When we think of purity and clean, I think of holiness. Yes. And like set righteousness apart. of God. Yeah. Set apart. That's what being holy is set apart. Uh, in, in, I think it's 1 Corinthians 5, 17, it says it's first or second. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Mm -hmm. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. Well, in that same uh, few scriptures there, it says, He was made to be sin, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. So in other words, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, God gives Chad Honeycutt or Ben Coleman or David Pater or whoever it may be that's receiving Christ. He is holy, his righteousness, his purity, his clean. And he took your sin and mine, all these bad things we've done, mm -hmm. the things people know about, the things they don't hate, hey, the things you don't even know you've done it with. Buried right. in the dung people. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Buried right. Yeah. Yeah. All of them things <clears throat> he put on Christ. Yes. That's powerful. I mean, it's just powerful because God is holy. And he requires a holy people. And the way to holiness is through repentance and submission to God. Eyes as flames of fire. What does that mean, Chad? Searching. What's he searching for? Real king. Well, I know. I, I, I feel. I feel like I'm. More, I feel like I'm taking the uh, SAT. It's not an exam. Uh, <laughs> Searching for any lost soul. Yes, as Jesus said, He's come to seek and to save the lost. Any lost soul. What else, man? Searching for the people that want to follow Him. Amen. Searching for people that want to give their life to Him. Amen. To want to serve Him. More disciples. The Bible says. <laughs> The eyes of the Lord long to and fro across the whole earth, searching hearts for those to show himself strong, excuse me, I got to show himself strong in those whose hearts are toward him. Mm -hmm. So God's always looking at the heart, ain't he? Yes, he is. He searches the heart. Uh, in Jeremiah, he says, uh, the heart is desperately wicked, who can know it? And then it says, I, the Lord, search the heart. Mm -hmm. So his eyes, you know, you can't hide from God. No. You cannot hide sin in your life. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can hide it from people. You can hide it from uh, us. Mask it. Put a mask yeah. on. But you cannot hide from God. You cannot hide sin from God. His eyes pierced straight through. Like a two-edged sword. It says his feet were like brass. Mm. What does that mean, Chad? Mm. Oh, I can think. I don't know. Judgment. I'm probably I'm on, I'm on the same page, brother. Not <laughs> It sure sounds like it's a <laughs> It's almost like a feet like brass and judgment, like unwavering. Like he's not going to budge. God is God. He is unchanging. Nothing's going to change, John. How long does brass last? It doesn't even last a long time. It doesn't even run. Really. So it lasts for, I mean, lasts forever. Yep. Right. I didn't know brass yeah. does not rust. Well, I mean, yeah. well, I mean, I mean yeah. it tarnishes. I mean, you dig it up every couple thousand years, you know, they, they find them in the ground, not even rusted, it looks like you just put it there. So right. when you look at that, you know, unwavering, it'll last forever. That, yeah. that was great right there, yeah. it'll last forever. Yeah. <clears throat> Judgment. It's appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. Yeah. Are you ready? For the judgment. Are you ready? You say, what in the world do you mean? Do you know that when you die, when we die, we all gonna die, that if you're a child of God, you'll stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Mm -hmm. You're not condemned. You have nothing to worry about as far as your salvation. But he's gonna judge your work, what you've done since you were saved for Jesus and what you've done for yourself. And 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 it, it, everything his in piercing searching eyes will know exactly what was done for his glory or for self mm -hmm. but you will not lose your salvation you may lose rewards but your salvation is still intact right <laughs> but those that die without Christ 
will stand before the great white throne of judgment. And that is a awful, the worst place in the world you can find yourself. Because when you stand before the great white throne of judgment, you stand before God Almighty. The Alpha and the Omega beginning and the end, the one to know who is and was and is to come. And you'll stand in your sins before God. The very one that gave his son to be saved, you rejected him. All your life you rejected salvation. You will stand before that him and you'll give account. The Bible says that he'll say, depart from me. So, or on the good side, well, what? Well, the the <clears throat> I mean, that, that's one thing I just couldn't understand is welcome. You know, you got the free gift of salvation. You got how can you reject love? You know, we, we're always striving for love and to be loved and for uh, affection, and that's what He's given us. How can we reject love? Because essentially that's what we're doing. We're just rejecting Him, and He is perfect love. That's right. <clears throat> pride. Pride. Pride is, pride is what What would pride be? 70% pride. Pride. off? Pride's why people reject. Oh, yeah. 80%? 90%? Yeah, it's, it's all pride, because yeah. you think about it. It's 100%. And it? how much does the Bible talk about pride? Uh, it's what Satan, it's why he was cast out of heaven. He mm -hmm. become pride. He was pride. Um, Let's see here. His countenance was as the sun. Glory. Glory. Now you think about Moses when he went up on uh, the mountain to uh, get the Ten Commandments from God. He came down, his face was glowing. This <laughs> is all the glory of God. Exodus 33, that's my favorite. <laughs> I love it. His face was glowing. They had to cover his face, didn't they? Yes, yes. Because he was glowing. Well, he asked to see God's face, and God said, you will not see my face. He will hide him in a cliff rock, and as he passes yeah. by, I'll put out my hand. Just a and glimpse. He'll be able to see my back. I mean, that is powerful. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Verse 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Key to verse 20 says, The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Messengers, pastors. <laughs> Jesus holds them in his hand. And Brother Bobby's got me here, Touch not my anointing. First Chronicles. Read that again. 16. Touch not my anointing. Who's anointing? Well, uh, preachers, man of God, teachers, singers. Anybody that's doing something for God, that God's called us to be anointed by mm -hmm. God. Without the anointing, we can do nothing mm -hmm. yeah, for God. Nothing. I've, I've heard uh, people that could speak really good, or people that could sing really good, but they weren't anointed. And it's just it's nothing. I mean, it's just it's somebody that may not be the best speaker in the world, or somebody that may not be the best singer, but they're anointed. There's something different, special. It's, it's God's hand. Verse 16, let's see. Uh, verse 17. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying to me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. You know, when John saw Jesus, well, check this out. This is the disciple that says, I'm the one Jesus loves. I'm John. Beloved, I'm one Jesus. And here he is seeing Jesus. The one he walked with on yeah. earth for three and a half years. And he falls at his feet as he's dead. Mm -hmm. Think about it. How powerful that is. The holiness and majesty of God. He collapsed at his feet. Perfect love. Not one that he had not seen. But one that had just died on the cross for him, rose again, said, I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. He leaves, and then he has a vision. And he collapses. Mm -hmm. It's beyond my comprehension. What did you on 17? He laid, he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. 
Amen. When we are saved and have the hand of the Lord upon us, we need not be afraid. Amen. We need not be afraid. Perfect love casteth out fear. Glory. We need not be afraid. If we got any time with salvation, fear is like it's like the biggest. We, we try to control things. Yes, we try to control things, and we don't relinquish command to Him. Um, we try to fix things and negotiate with God. It doesn't work. I mean, <laughs> just got to relinquish ourselves from the man and give it to him. He's got this. Trust me, his outcome is going to be a big lot better than ours. Look, I've messed it up for a long time. And when you finally surrender, pray to God for it. And when we die, when the Lord comes back and all this happens, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. This place is temporary. Savior of the world, he has conquered death, and he can deliver us from judgment and hell. He has the keys to unlock death and hell and deliver us from bondage. 
the Bible says, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, death is our enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, I think the Bible says it's our last enemy to be defeated. Right. Death. Yes. So. <clears throat> Verse 19. 19. Ed, you want to read that? Write the things which ye have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. Things which thou hast seen. Let's see here. I'm reading from a commentary I have. That there was a clear instruction to Jesus Christ. Christ repeats his commission to John. He tells John to write three things. These things provide an outline for the book of Revelation. The things which he had seen, that is the vision of the glorified Christ. The things that were, that is the state and condition of the churches at the time. And the things that would be thereafter. That is the consummation of human history. The coming again of our Lord Jesus Christ in the end of the world. We are facing the end times, the return of Jesus Christ. And that is the next prophetic thing on God's calendar. Mm -hmm. Read them one more time. Vision. Yep. The things which, had, we, which, which they seen. were. Yep. The things which you were. That's the uh, state and condition of churches at this time. Right. Present time. <clears throat> things that would be thereafter. Thereafter. Okay. The consummation of human history, the coming again of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the end of the world. That's a commentary I'm using, a different commentary. Um, verse 20. Do you have yes. something you want to say? No, no. I'm just kidding. Okay. I'll say you turn over. This will be the last verse we, we, we do. We're going to stop at verse 20. And then we'll start. Uh, is there a verse 20? I might, I might have told you wrong. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're good here. I'm okay. talking about yeah. that. We're going we're gonna, to. Uh, Finish up with verse 20. Let me turn back so I can read. You want me to read? I can. Yeah. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Amen. Any questions? <laughs> so far, so good. Next, no, no one has any questions. Next Tuesday night, we'll pick up with Revelation uh, chapter 2. No, we won't. We'll be no, in revival. We'll be in revival. Yeah. Next Tuesday night, we'll be back under this tent. Yes. Yes, so, uh, Y'all come on out and be with us at 804 South Wall Street, Benson, North Carolina, which is, old, is Highway 301, uh, 730 nightly. At 7 p.m., we're going to have uh, free hot dogs. Free hamburger, I mean, uh, free chicken barbecue. sandwiches, free barbecue sandwich. It'll be different, something different every night. Me and you are changing night. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Hood with Love of Christ Ministries will be doing that for us. And so uh, as long as it lasts, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be doing that. But uh, 730, we've got Jason Weekline coming from West Virginia. Keith Wren, they're going to supply worship. Union Grove worship team's coming the first two nights, I think. And uh, we're excited. God's going to do some amazing things here uh, in Benson. So y'all be in prayer with us, and hopefully we'll see you there. We'll try to go live, too. Uh, so if you can't make it, you can watch live every night. But uh, if you have any questions or prayer requests, just post them, and we'll answer them tonight, and we'll pray for you. Pass the word. Share this. Invite, invite, invite. Please come on out. Everybody plan on attending. Yes. Um, come on. They, 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 they. It's special everywhere, but it's in a setting now. When this is all put together, it's, it's, it's special. People are hungry. People um, want true revival. Share it. <clears throat> Reach out with people. Every one of us knows someone that's lost. Uh, get revived. Yes. And if revival, crusade, you know, got all kinds of, get revived. We've got to get revived to be able to go out and every day. Stop. Every day. Amen. Uh, and, and don't, you know, hey, don't be afraid of it. Nope. Jump right in. Lord, how much? Hey, you know, I'm glad you said that. There's something just remind me. If you come to this tent, 
If you come to 804 South Wall Street, Benson, 730, Monday night or any time after, come to worship God. Yes. Really? Don't worry about what somebody thinks if you say amen or if you raise your hand or you want to stand up and praise God. Come to worship. You know, if it's not of God, yes. We, yes. we ain't down with that. You know, we're just being honest with you. But if you come to worship God from your heart, that's what it's all about, worshiping God, just bringing Him glory. He's liberty. Worthy. Yeah, liberty. Liberty. It's not about bringing glory to yourself or attention to yourself. There again, we go back to anointing. Yeah. Just uh, worshiping God from your heart. You know what I mean? Being went to uh, Kentucky to, to have very revival. Because we wanted to see what was going on. And they were worshiping God. Crazy. More blank. That's, that's, I mean, it was that's what they were doing. They were worshiping God. And uh, from their heart. And look, being underneath this tent, don't be afraid. This is a non-judgment zone. We come here because we're seeking the presence of the Lord. We come here and praise Him. Everything else, He blesses us with. That's right. Salvations, the rededications, at the end of the day, everything we do with our walk in Christ is a soul. A soul is a soul. Wherever it might be, wherever the Lord leads us to go, or wherever He leads us to walk to, or wherever we run up with, it's a soul. Cousin, uncle, daddy, mama, somebody you've never met before. You know, a lot of people won't go to the church uh, with you because they've been invited and they just don't go, but uh, you can probably get them to come to a tent. And I've been told twice since we've been here, um, there's one. God left in one, the 99 to reach one. Amen. And we're always trying to reach just one. Mm -hmm. so, and I've been that just one. Yeah, it's not about the numbers. Who all is underneath this tent? It's not about the numbers. Like he just said, it's about that one. That's what we're here for. We're doing what God's called us to do. And we do it with peace and we do it with joy. <clears throat> one, one thing that that God is really dealing with my heart about is that where's the passion for lost souls? I'm not talking specifically to you guys. I'm talking to me. The worst of my passion. When, when's the last time I shed tears over lost souls? You know, um, I serve the Lord and preach the gospel. But I can tell you, through uh, battles and scars, you can get hard, hard, hard. Callous. You still, you're still doing the mission. You're still doing what you were commissioned to do, but you're doing it out of obligation and faith, and not so much love. I don't know if that makes any sense. Ooh, love makes ain't compassion. Yeah, that hits deep. But God's dealing with me about that. that I need Him to touch me. Yes. I, I need I need that as well. I, I second that. That's revival for me. Get revival. Yeah. So, Be revival. And hey, that's something we've got to do daily. That's something we got. Wednesday night ain't going to do it. Sunday night ain't going to do it. It's, it's got to be a daily mission. To be revived. And just before we get up here, I want to say thank you to, to all the ones that have helped with this. We, we've had the land was given to us to use. Yes, yeah, praise God. Uh, Pat's, um, Kenneth Blackman, Kenneth, mm -hmm. Black, Kenneth yeah. Pat Blackman, on Pat's restaurant, or, uh, store is an awesome place to eat lunch and breakfast. Uh, they've let us use this land. Brother Jerry McLean, um, he, he's a been very gracious. He's, he, he, we don't even have to pay for the power, but he's letting us use the power that he's already got here and, and use his land for parking. Um, Brian Dixon, they donated uh, the Court of Joel John. Um, we had, who was it donated the light plant? Brent Davis with the light plant for the parking. And look, we try to pay for this, but these people say, no, if it's for God, it's for free. And they just give it to us to use for the Lord. Called a brother of ours, Robert, with Coca Cola, and hey, we need some water for the revival. He said, No problem. Next day, 85 cases. Yeah. So I, I wanted to say all that for two reasons. One, to thank everybody publicly, but also, more importantly, to say when you see God giving provisions um, like He's doing, something's about to happen. That's right. Um, he is doing something here. And uh, we got somebody rolling up here, so we, I had some. It's a prayer. Yeah, it's like it's a prayer. Prayer. But just just know that this is not something we plan. It's not something that we set out to do. Um, and in the 
past, it has been. In the past, we had planned and set out to do things six months in advance here. But this year came about by God, and he put it all together in just a short amount of time. And so I personally feel there's a spiritual stronghold here in Benson, and a strategic stronghold, not because of anything particularly different in Benson or Clinton or Bladenburg as far as this area. I think it's a strategic place. You had mentioned 95 and 40, northeast, southwest of Compass. You got an intersection of two major interstates. The spiritual and the natural kind of go hand in hand sometimes. You know, you can kind of look at it. And just like the battles in your mind where there's a battle on the battlefield, you know. But that intersection of interstates is strategic. Well, spiritually, there's a strategic thing here. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it ever since we've been here. It's tight. What we call it in the preaching world is it feels tight. It feels that way. But when it breaks, it's going to be on. God's going to do something. So we pray that we'll be able to come and bring the family and lost loved ones. And we have to really cover it with prayer. We really want some prayer. Keep it lifted up in prayer. As powerful as that is, please keep it lifted up in prayer. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait. Anything else, God? Love y'all and be blessed. Let the words of our mouths and meditation of our hearts be said to one in sight. The Lord, our strength and our name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a blessed night.